Nakshbandi Commandments and Meditation. The first part of the meditation is known as body meditations. I spoke of the breath watchfulness and its significance as an important tool for meditation. The second in this sequence is Nazar Barkadam or Watch Your Steps. Individual will and the divine will must coincide with one another or be in harmony with one another. It means a seeker while walking must keep his eyes on his feet. Your eyes open in the outer world of duality. Objects in you and feet represents the divine will. Nazar Varkadam implies a conscious effort on the part of seeker to merge his will into that of the divine. Wherever you are or about to place your feet, keep your eyes there. Let it be a conscious effort and without any care. Do not allow your plans to move freely. When you look right or left or in front, unnecessary sights will win the heart. Most wheels on the heart are created by the images which are transmitted from your eyes to the mind during your day-to-day -day interaction and living. These may disturb your heart with turbulence because of the different kind of desires which have been imprinted on your mind. Such images are like wheels on the heart. They block the light of the Divine Presence. This is why Sufi Masters do not allow their seekers who have purified their hearts through constant zikr to look at other than their feet. Human hearts are like mirrors that reflect and receive any image easily that comes in front of it. This will eventually distract them and bring impurities to their heart. Therefore, the seeker is asked to lower his gaze in order not to be assailed by negative energies. Lowering the gaze is also a sign of humility. Proud and arrogant people never look at their feet. It is also an indication that one is following the footsteps of the Holy Prophet. While walking, Holy Prophet never used to look right or left, but used to look only at his feet, moving steadfastly towards his destination. This is also a sign of high state when the seeker looks nowhere except towards his Lord. Like one who intends to reach a destination quickly, the seeker aspires to move the journey's end quickly. This he does by not looking to his right or his left, not looking at the desires of the world, instead looking only for the Divine Presence. How this can be made a meditation? We can start a 15-minute meditation or half an hour meditation until it becomes a conscious effort that at no time while you are moving, while you are walking on the road or in any other place, your gaze remains focused on your feet. We can do as a practice, as an effort. In the beginning, we choose, for instance, those who go for a walk. When you are walking, Keep your gaze on your feet, irrespective of who is walking along your side or what is going on here and there. So when you start in small doses, it becomes a practice and then eventually a time comes when without any effort this begins to happen. In the beginning it is very difficult to keep a gaze on your feet for 24 hours. So you start working in small doses. You decide that as you are coming out of your house, going towards your car, you will practice this. When you reach to the office, until you reach to your again, you will practice this. Each seeker has to make such moments according to his own convenience and requirements. One thing is that every seeker has to practice this. Choose the area where there will be the most distraction. If you are holding a high position in your office, 
as you are walking through the corridors of your office, you draw the attention of all the other employees. If your gaze is focused on your feet, the distractions will not bother you. Or when you are walking through the aisles of a supermarket, which normally each one of us has to do once in a week or more often, that time we can keep our focus, keep our gaze on our feet. Sheikh Ahmad Al Faruqi Mujaddidi Al Ifsani Razi Allah Ta'ala said in 295 letter of his Maktuba, the gaze precedes the step and the step follows the gaze. The ascension to the high state is, the, is first by vision followed by a step. When the step reaches the level of ascension, the gaze, then the gaze will be lifted up to another state to which the step follows in its turn. Then the gaze will be lifted even higher and the step will follow in its turn. First comes gaze, then the step. So with one step you have moved forward. Again comes a vision, then a state and this process continues. And so on until the gaze reaches the state of perfection to which it will pull the steps. We say when the step follows the gaze, the murid has reached a state of readiness in approaching the footsteps of the Holy Prophet. So the footsteps of the Holy Prophet are considered the origin of all steps. Shah Bahauddin Naqshpandra Zilla Talao said, If we look at the mistakes of our friends, we will be left friendless because no one is perfect. Kadam or footsteps signifies will, trying to match our will with the will of the Sheikh, then that of the Prophet, and finally of Lord Ati Allah. Wa ati rasul, wa so then finally from the sheep moves on to the Holy Prophet and then to Allah SWT. The third in the series of body meditation is Safar Darwatan or Journey Homeward. Migrating from evilness to the heaven means to travel to one's homeland. The home is not where you live, it is temporary home, but you do not own it. It means that the seeker travels from the world of creation to the world of the Creator. The house that you live in did not belong to you before and after you it will not belong to you again. This world is like a great guest house where we come to stay for some time. When you are holiday, you stay in a hotel in a particular city or country for a certain period of time. Before you, someone else has stayed in the room and after you, someone else will stay in the same room. Similar is the situation. As long as we remember that our real home is not this. I am going to my Lord from one state to a better state and from one station to the higher. This was not understood when Holy Prophet said so. It is said that the seeker must travel from the desire for the forbidden to the desire for the Divine Presence. Nakshbandi Sufi order divides that travel into two categories. The first is the external journey or the journey into the world of duality, the objects and beings. In this world, all that you call as yours will be taken away one day. Neither the house nor the relatives are yours. The world is like a fine stage on which we as human beings come to play our part. And too swiftly the scenes are changing. Something that is your 
today may not be yours tomorrow. All relations are false. Their nature keeps on changing. Therefore, introspect and seek the eternal that is changeless. All the religion give importance on family and society. Neither family is a reality nor society. Have you ever seen a family anywhere? If you have seen, let me know. What we see, we see a collection of people, male and female, connected to one another through a common bond. The family is not the real. Family is an imaginary world. According to sociology, family means a group of people connected to one another by a common bond. What you see instead of family, individuals. Individuals can be transformed because they are the reality. The society, the family, the nation cannot be transformed because they are imaginary, sociological rules. If we consider human being as primary unit, we can think of bringing a transformation. All the religion focus on the family, family values. That is why we cannot bring about the transformation because we have chosen a wrong unit, family as a unit which is imaginary. The second is internal journey. External travel is travel from one land to another in search of job, in search of family or something or the other. This enables you to move to the second category, the internal journey. Seekers, once they have found a perfect guide, are forbidden to go on another external journey. In the external journey, there are many difficulties which beginners cannot endure without falling into forbidden actions because they are weak. In their understanding. The second category is internal journey. Internal journey requires the seeker to leave his low manners and move to the higher ones, to throw out of his heart all worldly desires. He will be lifted from a state of uncleanliness to a state of purity. At that time, he will no longer be in need of more internal journey. Instead, he will have a purified heart, making it pure and clear like water, transparent like crystal, polishing like a mirror, showing the realities of all the matters essential for his life. Without any need for external action on his part, in the inner screen of his heart, Everything that is needed for his life and for the life of those around. We are born as an individual with clear inner screen. As we continue to grow as part of our family and society, many things are written. You are conditioned into a particular way and this process of conditioning continues. So the inner sky inner screen gets full with all kind of writings and you continue to live your life according to that. It is important to be a human being first, ever old to be a human being than anything else. Learn to have a good taste for food instead of going to eat a particular kind of food. Then you will be able to know the quality of food which is healthy for you and which is not. In the same way, when your focus is on being a human being, to develop a human quality, then you will be able to seek all that is good all around. Then the meditation completes. You will pick up all that is worth from all around. None so vile upon this earth that live. 
everyone has something good to do. This is the famous statement from William Shakespeare, one of his plays. We do not place it in the category of a religious commandment, but it has the quality of that. None so vile upon this earth that live. everyone has something good to do. But do we understand this? If we have to get something, no, we cannot take from someone who does not who is a Hindu or a Christian or a Muslim. Because I am born Muslim, I will die Muslim. You were not born as a Muslim or Hindu or Christian. Instead, you were born as a human being, innocent, with nothing written on your inner sky. The very emphasis of Maratva, the spiritual journey, is to attain to that innocence once again. And here comes a famous statement from Jesus. When he was asked who can enter the kingdom of thy father, he said one who is childlike. Childlike is a very conscious statement. A child is innocent but he is not aware of his innocence. When a grown-up person becomes childlike, he is aware of his innocence. He is aware of his childlike nature. And unless one attains to that state of childlikeness, when the inner sky is once again clean, cleansed of all kind of writings on it, then actually you have reached the threshold of the life eternal. This is the body of